after that big gain. See what they do now. They're going to hand it off. And he has a room up the middle. And he's making guys miss left and right, but he's all the way down to the Pioneer 45. Pioneer defense coming on to the field slow here as the Quakers are looking to make a quick start. And that'll be a gain of about two. So it'll be second and eight. Information for the Quakers. They're going to hand it off, and that's an immediate loss of about three. So it'll be fourth and six. Good stand by the Pioneer defense after letting two back-to-back -back big plays. Mill's going to take the snap. Drop back. Look for his running out Starn. Starn's going to make a move and get a first down. With it being third and ten. And actually third and eleven as they're on the 35. It's going to be look to the left for Newell. And that pass is too hard for Miller again. So looking for the same target. Still the same outcome. Fourth and long. Bad decision there. Good coverage from the Pioneers. Could have been a better ball. Uh, but the Quakers... When they had momentum, burn two timeouts. They're stuck in a bad opportunity here. Fourth down. It looks like they're going to have to punt the ball away. So they don't come out empty-handed here. Do burning? They did end up burning two timeouts, so it's not the end of the world for them being the first drive of the game. But definitely hoping to score there if you're a Quakers fan. He's going to take the snap on his goal line. Looking to his right immediately. Throwing it up, but overthrown. Looking for Levi Dorn. Snap to Church, clean, he's going to get a kickoff near defenders, and there is a penalty, and that's going to roll all the way to the 40, 41, but it might not even matter as there's going to be a roughing or running into the kicker. That's going to be an automatic first down for the Pioneers. Another uh, mistake there from the Quakers, we kind of saw that uh, offense where they had opportunities to capitalize, uh, but they just didn't, Is now... They got a bit too aggressive there on the punt, trying to block it as they just completely ran into Church there, which will give the Pioneers another chance. So their offense didn't do too much, but again, they were backed up deep into their own territory. Same formation. Daniel looking to the right immediately. Finds a man. He's going to be caught for about of a five-yard gain. Pioneers only need about a yard to gain. Then he's going to run, and he's going to get all the way to the 32 for a first down. We're going to see a lot of that this game we have in the first two games. Hoke Denny being fifth in the state in rushing yards with over 400 on the season. Ben that's back in the game who's limping off earlier now looking to block for Denny. Denny's going to overthrow. That's Doran again. So it's going to be third and 11. Re repetition of some issues we saw early on the season. Hogan didn't give it, getting a little too aggressive, throwing a bit too hard, and just overthrowing this man. Does that there pass intended to Levi Dorn, averaging 76 yards per game on the season? But that's just some things Hogan didn't need to work on because Levi Dorn had the inside leverage on the defensive back. So if it's thrown to him, he's going to hopefully be able to catch it because he has really good hands. Just Hogan didn't miss him there. So Dane's going to take the snap, looking to pass, gets it out of pressure, still running to his right, looking to escape. Still's making defenders miss, and he's going to get tackled for a big loss. That's at their own 17. RPOs, just run plays in general, as they had a lot of success doing that last drive. It's going to be a fake handoff, looking deep is Newell. He has a man, and he's caught. And that's going to be tackled near the 20. They're going to mark him at the 21. So a big gain and a big play for the Quakers to get some momentum on their side and hopefully get the first score of the game. About two minutes left. It's going to be a throw at Starnes. And they're going to get the first down inside the 10, mark it at the 9. So first and goal for Plainfield. Hand off to Starnes. Starnes can go up the middle and going to fight for it and he does get it so the first score of the game is for the Quakers 6-0 with 116 left in the first quarter went for the fake they gave it off to their tight end on the left side but there's a flag on the play anyway and there was a delay of game on the Quakers so that's going to move him back 
It'll be interesting to see if they just go for the kick or go for two because they still have their kickers out there, but Moore's will definitely going to be just ready if they do fake it. You can see them going all the way on the outside to make sure it's not a fake. So it's definitely going to be a long PAT attempt coming up. Cameron Grimes for the extra point attempt for Plainfield. That's up and good. So 7-0 lead for the Quickers here nearing the end of the first quarter here at Mooresville. Dean's looking to pass right away as Brune. That's all the way out to the 38 for a first down in Plainfield territory. Oh, actually, that was his brother Tyler Denny, number one. Four wide here coming from the Pioneers. Clements in the backfield. Looking to throw as Dorn, and he's going to get about two yards to make it third and nine. Good job there from the Pioneers. Able to set the block uh, was the Pioneer wide receiver. Able to get it to Dorn, able to wrap around the blocker, able to get a couple extra yards here. So now big third down coming up for the Pioneers. Don't want to not capitalize on this field position. Dane's going to take the snap, stay in the pocket, looking to his left, fires, and that's behind Bennett in between Thomas and Bennett. Didn't know which one he was intending it for, but either way, it brings up fourth down. Big miss there, fourth down coming up. Morsel's going to go for a high snap. Then he has to get it down, and he's just looking to throw it away, and the offensive line for the Pioneers is letting Denny just have it as they have not blocked nearly enough on that, on that play. Turnover on downs leads to Plainfield having the ball on their own 38. Hand off to Stearns again. He's going to make some moves and still on his feet. He's going to get all the way to the 45 and make it third and three. Uh, just they haven't had many passing opportunities. And so that's going to be a first down again on the run for the Quakers. RPOs that the Quakers like to run. Newell looking to his right, his lone receiver, and has him, and he has room to run with blockers ahead of him. He makes one man miss, and that's going to be Brune bringing him down near the 10. So first and goal for the Quakers at the Pioneer 10-yard line. And the kick will be up, and the mine didn't even have the distance, and that's going to be short, so no good. And the Pioneer's going to take it, take over at the 20, at their own 28. Before. Danny looking to pass over the middle, and that was through Dorn's hands, definitely catchable. So it'll be end up third and long. And here's Denny looking to throw deep. Has Dorn throws it into double coverage. And it's gonna be knocked down by both by two Quakers. So that'll be fourth and long. So new set of downs for the Quakers and looking to run and he will have a big hole up the middle and slide for 10 yards exactly, so another first down by the quarterback, Newell. And it's Newell looking to his right, looking to throw. It's a big arm wide open as a man, and he couldn't come down with it. Looks like it's just over the fingertips, over the shoulder, and that's going to bring out the third. Newell looking to his right, immediately has a man wide open, and he's going to be tackled at the 12, excuse me, 11. So first and 10 at the 11. has not been the star in the quicker offense so far tonight. But now it's going to be Stern. He's going to run all the way up to the five. So second and four. Another hand up to Ferguson. He's going to dive up in the air. And he's going to get in for another touchdown. Quakers now lead 13 to zero over the Pioneers. So the Pioneers going to off. It's going to take the field again. Denny's in trouble. Has to escape pressure throws and looking for Denny and then there will be flags from both sides of the field and be possible pass interference on the Quakers from defense so if something doesn't look right or they need to stop the clock they do have one more to stop it and that's dropped again from Dorn usually a reliable target but tonight he's just not been able to haul in these throws that's his second drop of the game when it feels like he has to have it of uh, 217 left on the clock, second and 10 coming up, but that's another pass that Levi Dorn has to make. He, he's, like you said, he's typically a reliable target, but so far in this game, he really hasn't, but he's dropped a lot of easy 
catches. As we look here, he it looks like he comes off of his route and kind of just lets his body catch it, which allows or forces the ball to bounce off of him, which is beneficial for the Quakers. Fake out to Clement, staying looking up the middle, and that's through the hands of Bennett and almost intercepted. That was number one, Caden Vanderbush, who almost he's going to take the ball, look to throw. He has Bennett who catches it and will spin all the way and get catapulted to the 47 of Plainfield. Danny's going to take the snap, look to his left immediately, still in the pocket, throws, finds Broon, who gets the catch and is still up on his feet, but will get tackled eventually near the 30. So the Pioneers are now moving under two minutes left in the first half. Did nothing. And they're at the playoff. Denny's looking deep. He's going to run it himself and has some room. He's going to try to go all the way outside, and he will with two seconds left. And they say he ran out short. That's Leo Hiab with the kickoff for the second half. It's going to be Brune going to receive it up the five. He's going to take it up the middle. Has some room, and we'll eventually get tackled at the 28. But that definitely can change. And Dane's going to instantly run, and he will get all the way to the 49. They're going to mark him right at the first down, maybe even short. Looking to stay in the pocket, now runs up ahead. Up the middle, has room, and he's going to dive all the way in the Quaker territory at the 47 for a first down and a big momentum shift. 101 rushing yards per game with four touchdowns. And Danny looking for Dorn, just overthrows him. So not even close as neither Dorn nor was the defender in, in the area. So second and 10. Who would have gone for it? Is Denny looking immediately at some Caden Broon, cutting back and has a spin move and will get to the 42. So a gain of about five. There's Denny staying in the pocket looking to Dorn. Dorn catches it. And he will get pushed, still on his feet, but his forward progress is stopped at the 31. And then there's a late flag as he throws Doran down. That was number 41. Um, coming up now on first, second and six. You got to think, that's Brune again who drops it, turns his head before he even catches the ball, so that's another self-inflicted mistake. But you got to think if this game gets closer in later moments, there's other going to be more cheapness between both teams. And you get it off, they do. Denny looking to roll his right immediately. Has a hole up the middle. Now still looking. And he laterals it. And the ball is loose on the ground. The Quakers say they have it. And the referees are trying to un put the players out of the pile. And um, the Pioneers might have recovered it, but it doesn't matter. It would be a turnover on downs as they weren't even close to the first down marker. <coughs> so last second looks like, oh, actually it was knocked out of Denny's hand. So it wasn't even a lateral, but a fumble. Good, and created pressure for himself there. And Newell looking for a man deep. And that was through his hands and almost caught. Four, four field position. And that's going to be a tackle for a loss of maybe a yard or two, but still a big defensive stand for the Pioneers. Makes it a third and longer. Is, but in situations like this, it doesn't change a whole lot. And Caden Bruin gets a big hit near the 35. Fake hand off to Clements, and that's a throw to Trey Bennett over the middle. And he's still going, and he has room all the way, and he will get in for a touchdown. The Pioneers and a booster, and they get on the board, cut the lead down to nine, six to fifteen. What a play from Trey Bennett, able to use his arm to stiff arm the defender. Had to go up a little bit to get that one. Makes one guy miss through the end. We look at this one. Good throw Let's there. Gets go. over the two linebackers. He. 
gets attacked here by number one, Vanderbush. He's going to stiff arm him. Great block there from the wide receiver as when it dives into the end zone. Great job there. Pioneers get their first points on the board. It's now 15 to 6. Pioneers definitely back into this game. So Tyler Church is on for the extra point. That kick will be through down the middle. So cut the lead down to eight, seven to 15 as the Pioneers still trail the Quakers with 329 left in the third quarter. Which means he has two rushing touchdowns on the season so far. And that Church case can go all the way to the one. Great kick by Church, but now the Quakers are gonna look to go over the middle and he's still on his feet. He's still going and he's gone. He is coming in the beat. And the Quakers get a quick answer as they get a touchdown with 3.14 left to go. So that extends the lead 22 to seven. One right now. And they're going for two again. And they just walk in. So that's 23 to seven in favor of the Quakers with three minutes left in the third quarter. And after scoring a touchdown, the Plainfield Quakers get a kick return. And that's batted up in the air and almost picked off. So dangerous play there for the Pioneer offense. But luckily it falls incomplete. Good job there from Plainfield. They're all over that. We've seen Moiseville do that a lot. A lot of slants and curls and a lot of routes in that area of the field. So these defensive linemen are definitely getting used to that. So they're going to be jumping up a lot more if they're not getting to Hogan Denny. Looks yep. like he threw it off of a helmet of either one of his linemen or a defender of the Quakers. So just a, another mistake by Denny. This one overthrows JJ Knight. Well, put a little too much on that. Is the plan, but they need to give some time for the play to develop. And again, going for on fourth down. Denny's going to get sacked. And looks like he lost the ball. Doesn't really matter if it's a fumble or not. It's a turnover on downs. So another handoff to Stearns. He has some room on the right side. Actually, that isn't Stearns. I believe that is Ferguson. So Colin Ferguson brings it all the way inside the five. All right, that's all I got. Go back to them. And that's going to be a run inside the end zone. So the Quickers add to the score, make it 29 to 7 over the Pioneers. Quaker team as they fake it again, and that's going to be another two-point conversion. Plainfield leads 31-7, to as that's the third fake, I believe, that they have scored. Denny, still in the pocket, looking deep. Is Levi Dorn, and just overthrown. Pioneers have, have good looks, but they're just not capitalizing on the opportunities they have to score and get back into this game, especially late in the fourth quarter. I think Levi Dorn might have had a chance to get that one. In a situation like this, you need to just go after it. It's hard to tell from here um, how close or how far he was from the ball. Levi Dorn definitely upset. Looks like we're going to need a replay here to see. It's a good ball. He definitely could have tried to get that one, just kind of gave up at the end. So Levi Dorn definitely letting the frustration get to his head there. Just get it off before the game clock expires, and that's another sack by the Quakers. Tyler Church in the, his own end zone looking to punt, and he will. That will be to the 45. And a return has some room on the right side. And will they do it again? He has some blockers. Still on his feet, and he will. A punt return touchdown. This game has gone to Quakers all of a sudden. The Quakers have scored. Oh, looks like there's a flag on the play, maybe. There was. There was a flag spotted at the 34-yard line. Just when it looked like Plainfield had a punt return touchdown. Looks like there's going to be a flag. Possibly holding. Looks like it's on playing field, so the offense will have to trot out there. 
And it's a fumble, and it's going to be recovered by the Pioneers. So a mistake by the Quakers. A little bit of a deja vu from Bloomington North as they were down by a lot in the fourth quarter. And now with good field position, it was just under 10 minutes. And down by almost the same march. And, I mean, you could see the same thing twice, but you never know. I mean, there's not a whole lot of time left, but there have been certain simu similarities between this game for Mooresville and the Bloomington North game. But big miss opportunity just a minute ago. It looked like Plainfield was going to be up 38, maybe even 39 to 7. Now it's 31 to 7. Mooresville with great field position trying to put them back into a spot where they could possibly win this game. As passes to Dorn. Dorn's going to make a man miss, but he got up to the 40. Pioneers need to go quick now as they approach nine minutes. Still have all three of their timeouts. Morrisville just trying to get some points up on the board. Then look to his left as Dorn over the shoulder and was almost caught on the defender's back. Just concerning he needs very few the yards. Then he rolling to the right and throws. It's incomplete. Nobody was there to catch the ball, so that'll make it. Turnover on downs, and that was probably the last chance the Pioneers had. Just another missed opportunity from the Pioneers. Had a chance to make it 31-14 after the fumble. They had a chance to put themselves in a position where there might be a chance to come back. Uh, so we look here, that's just going to be batted. Danny, we could have seen him maybe try and stall the defense a bit and playmaker uh, because that's what he's really good at just does it there getting into it a bit Newell looking to go deep he will he's gonna try his receiver but just overthrown so with under five minutes be second and ten stop the clock looking to punt here is the Quakers and he will get it all the way down near the 35 and Brune drops it. It's a loose ball, but he looks like he got back on it just in time before the Quakers could get it back. A lot of promise in the last couple of drives. It's just silly mistakes near the end. That throw just too far ahead of Dorn, so incomplete. Play it safe and be aggressive when you need to be. There's Denny throwing to Dorn. Dorn's going to get out of bounds near the 34. They're going to make it a first down. <laughs> So the Panthers still moving down the field with 154 left to go. So offsetting penalties makes it first and 10 still. But Denny's rolling out to his right looking for somebody and he throws it behind Bennett just off the ground. 119 left to go. Denny's going to take the snap looking to pass again. Escaping pressure somehow. And I was looking to throw as Dorn wide open and he's going to walk in for the touchdown. That will cut the lead down to... 18. And the score is now 31 to 13. Able to scramble, go right, finds Dorn under pressure. Dorn gets, I believe, his second touchdown on the season. He had one entering this game. Good job there from Dorn, able to get that one. He's definitely had a lot of res receptions this game, but also a lot of targets. It's Journey Thompson, the sophomore. And he finds his brother Tyler for a two-point conversion. Cuts this lead down to 16. And it is. It's going to go 10 yards, and it just gets out of bounds. So that's going to be Quaker ball. So as this game winds down, the, the Quakers will move on 3-0, and the Pioneers will fall to 1-2.